When you have check engine light, the first thing you should do is plug in your OBD scanner and read faults. But as DIY mechanics, we can get kind of stuck at this point because now you're at default, but you are not sure what the code means and you are not sure about what to do next to fix default. And all of that will be topic for this video. I will show you different types of fault codes and I will also tell you what to do next to fix these faults. First, you need to know that there are differences between different diagnostic tools. Code reader like this is enough for check engine light. You can read engine codes but that's about it then you got these multi-system scanners that usually lets you scan engine transmission abs and your airbag module and then you have professional scan tools that will let you read fault codes from every control module in your vehicle all the mentioned before but plus every system your car has like radio navigation your tpms system all systems in your vehicle but most commonly you will have problem in your engine so code reader can be enough in most cases by the way if you don't have scanner yet and you need some advice about which to buy i have free pdf that explains everything you can download it in description okay and now let's talk about fault codes itself you got few main types of fault codes first you have pending code if the fault happens x times the pending code will then change to current code or confirmed code and now when the current code is present it will trigger your check engine light so first we have pending codes then we have current codes and then you also have permanent codes that is mode 10 now permanent codes are codes that you simply cannot erase with your obd scanner mostly when you get some broken wiring and your control modules doesn't get any voltages then that will set permanent fault for example for my intake air temperature sensor or mass airflow sensor if i unplug the sensor and there is no voltage no response coming from the sensor then it will be permanent fault which simply i cannot erase unless i fix the issue first and then you have also historical codes which are basically codes that aren't present anymore but your engine control module or other control modules still have some record about it and it displays them as historical historical codes so for example in the Toyota we had the P0113 now all of these digits are not random there are four different letters you can see here you either have P as powertrain that are faults with your engine your transmission then you can have B as body codes body codes are for everything that isn't powertrain but is in your interior most common body codes are airbag codes then you can have C as chassis chassis codes can be power steering codes ABS codes or TPMS faults and then the last codes are U which stands for network and those codes are communication codes so if your control modules cannot communicate between each other then you will get network codes now the second zero a second digit you will mostly see either zero then you can see one two or three difference is very simple if you see zero two or three that means the code is generic and it can be applied every car brand but when the first digit you see one for example you would have p one 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 three that means the code is manufacturer specific so it can have different meaning for audi than it has for chevrolet then you have the third digit we have one but this is only for powertrain codes if you have other codes like body or chassis this is not applicable but for powertrain codes zero or one is fuel and air mixture codes two is for fuel injectors three is for ignition four is exhaust and emission systems 5 is for idling, 6 is for engine control module, so ECM, and 7, 8 and 9 are for automatic transmission. Most commonly you will see 5 digit codes, but you can also see 7 digit codes. For example, it could look like start the same, PO113, and then we have two another digits, for example, one, one. So we have seven digit codes. Both of these codes mean the same thing. However, the seven digit codes will also give you one more detail about what is causing the code. For example, when you see 11 at the end, as you can see, that means short to ground. So now I have better idea about what is probably causing this fault. Now the meanings for the last two digits and also everything I previously said, you can save and use when you diagnose your problems. It will be somewhere below in the document section, depending on where you are watching. If you are inside the course, it will be somewhere here. If you are watching shorter version on YouTube, then I am recommending you check out my full course in the description. Okay, now we are inside the car we will connect the scanner i will show you how to read codes and also what to do once you read them let me use this top down scanner as you saw in the intro we have check engine light i will connect the vci 
let's go to diagnostics now it reads win for me so i don't have to type it in confirm select the specs and now we can go ahead and press this auto scan which will scan all control modules for fault codes now as you can see i have more than 30 control modules in this car so in the beginning i was talking about different scanners if i have just engine code reader only control module i can scan is the engine but all these other control modules i cannot scan with just code reader you need better tool but once again if you need help advising about which tool to get i have a free pdf guide that explains everything and give you best possible options in the link in the description now this tool is very fast we have scan completed we have two fault in abs and two faults in the engine let's check the abs first yeah we have the hybrid system malfunction which is probably caused by check engine light in the engine okay and now let's check those engine faults that we are curious about because one of them is causing our check engine light or all of them read dtc's and we have two codes and as you can see we have seven digit codes check it out so we have po110 and the additional two digits is 15 and then we have code for mass airflow sensor po100 and extra two digits are 14 let's look up what that means as you can see here 14 15 most likely we have short to the ground or we have open circuit for this sensor now i know there are two codes but in this car the intake air temperature sensor and mass airflow sensor are built in one sensor so if i have both these codes and all are saying that i have open circuit most likely we have some problem with wiring for our mass airflow plus intake air temperature sensor which is one sensor in this case so your first option is take the car to car shop but at least you know where the fault is happening but then of course what most of us want to do is go further with our diagnostic process you need to have a little bit better understanding about the codes okay so how do you get more information about the code for example this one the po100 for mass airflow sensor you can open my website iamcarhacker.com then go on the bottom there is search bar and just input that code so po100 open the article I have hundreds of them explained and now you get this quick overview so first you can read what it actually means po100 mass airflow sensor circuit malfunction is this code serious you can read if you should fix it right away but most codes you just want to fix right away even if they are not serious car faults work like this if you don't fix one soon you have three others but then this is the most helpful part possible causes now you will know what can be causing this fault so we have faulty or dirty muff sensor we have damaged or disconnected wiring air leaks in intake system crowded or damaged connectors to muff connector or faulty pcm and also you got diagnostic process explained and then i also got this section where i find old service cases of solving these codes so these are real service cases so you've got few of them there so you can get inspired by real mechanics how would they go about solving the code and then you get also this diagnose another diagnostic table that is based on these real service cases so first thing you should do in any case when you have fault for something check it out visually if there is no any visible damage or something so let's do that right now look here is the sensor and as you can see it's unplugged so And yes, since this is new car, unplug the sensor on purpose so I can show you how you can go about solving different codes in your car. But if I didn't do it, the first thing you could do, if I don't see any damages, go to engine control module, select data stream. Here I would open the MAF or mass airflow, depends on the name. Mass airflow sensor, you have also mass airflow circuit and you can look at live data and see if they, usually you want to see some change. For example, when I press on the gas pedal, and open this graph here, when I press on the pedal, I need more air coming in so if the sensor is functioning properly with the gas pedal down we should see it going up let me do that right now press the pedal and yes we can see that now we have more air coming in and here is the value and now i know when you first time open the live data you are confused about what those values means but i do have full video explaining those so you can go check it out now 